Aloha, it's Dave Lawrence. How are you? Big mahalo for tuning in. I hope you're doing well. Appreciate you taking time for this. Today we're welcoming back our buddy who we've had on the show a few times over the years. He's a sometime Valley Isle resident, so he's an extra special member of the Ohana. This trip, he's not sitting in with the Dalai Lama or one of his many local musician friends that we know of. Instead, he's doing a pair of shows with the Dukes of September. They're finally coming here, playing the Blaisdell Concert Hall, October 24th, the Mac, October 25th in Kahului, Maui, and the Dukes of September Rhythm Review is, of course, Boz Skaggs, Steely Dan legend Donald Fagan, and my guest, who we're grateful, squeezed in just a little bit of time for us today, great Michael McDonald. Hey, Mike. Aloha and mahalo, brother. Hey, Dave. How are you? Man? I'm good. Thank you so much for uh, being available. Oh, thank you, man. Appreciate it. We, we appreciate it. We've done some fun stuff with you over the years. Um, and I remember sitting around uh, BSing with you somewhere. I remember we were talking at one, maybe the Kokua event. We talked a little bit about this project. So tell folks about how it first came together, that you three cats ended up doing this thing. Well, it, it actually started out as an idea of Donald's and his wife, Libby Titus, uh, or Libby Fagan. But uh, Libby uh, herself is, is a, you know, a, a pretty formidable songwriter uh, over the years. She wrote, uh, you might remember a song by Linda Ronstadt, Love Has No Pride. Mm. Libby wrote that song. And, okay. Uh, she uh, and Donald had this idea to put on these shows starting out. It was just in the Manhattan, New York City area. Um, and we would play, you know, like downtown, uptown, uh, different venues like, you know, uh, uh, oh, the Lone Star Saloon in New York, uh, in the Village, and then maybe uh, uh, the Roseland Ballroom or something like that, you know, up, uptown. And, uh, and we... Back then, it was a lot of different acts. It was Phoebe Snow, myself, Boz, uh, Charles Brown, uh, Patty Austin, um, uh, the Young Rascals, uh, a lot of people like that, and uh, all pretty much people who were, you know, from the New York area <clears throat> um, and, and parts uh, beyond, you know. But uh, and we would play maybe four nights at three different venues, or you know, something in, in New York City, and. Uh, and that was it. And then we took it on the road when we did an album uh, back in the 90s. Uh, and uh, then we hadn't done it for many years until just about two years ago. We Donald called uh, Boz and I and wondered if we wanted to go out and just do just a band, you know, uh, where the three of us would be a part of the band. And we would, of course, do a couple of our own songs uh, prospectively, but uh, then we would, you know, uh, kind of dive into a, a, a larger body of material that uh, the, 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 one of the things that the theme of the Rock and Soul Review always was going back and finding like uh, some of our favorite songs from when we were kids and, and bands and, and starting out and, uh, and you know, pulling those songs out. You know, some of them were pretty popular, some of them were pretty obscure, but, you know, putting together a show of, of that kind of material that in some ways was kind of self-indulgent for us, but hopefully in a, in a manner that the audience could enjoy it as much as hopefully as we were enjoying doing it, you know. And, and so uh, that's what we, that's been kind of the aim of the thing. And uh, so we figured we needed to kind of come up with a name because it wasn't exactly just Buzz and Donald and I doing our own stuff, but more uh, kind of a third entity of a band that, uh, you know, was doing a lot of fairly obscure uh, uh, older material also, you know, so uh, it, it's been a real fun thing. It's been a real successful run for us, and uh, uh, sometimes we feel like people don't know who the hell we are, because, you know, <laughs> the Duke's of September, and, like, a lot of people said, you know, I I, I uh, wound up coming to the show for this reason or that reason, but I had no idea that it was you guys, you know, and somebody was just saying, oh, I want to go see this band, the Duke's of September, you know. So, uh, in some ways, we could have done a better job of maybe marketing yourself, marketing ourselves, you know. Uh, but uh, it's been a lot of fun, like I say, for us, and I think for the audiences, it's been kind of a, a, a trip through memory lane, and to a certain degree, that goes beyond just our our stuff. You know, going back to the seventies, we go back as far as the fifties with some of the music, you know. Um, and hell, we've even done a Buck Owens song out lately that. Uh, <laughs> 
uh, one of the girls sings, and it's it's great. You know, it's uh, it's amazing how people recognize this stuff, but they don't really maybe know where it came from. But they recognize it as kind of the soundtrack of their growing up. You know. Well, there's so much Americana. It's funny you mention that. That's associated with you cats and with the kind of music that you all were influenced by. That then, in, you know, inspired your your bodies of work, so to speak. You talked about that that uh, bitch and live record. I remember that record you're talking about from the mid '90s. How different is and and you've talked to the, you've mentioned some of the songs. How different is this set list um, compared to that record and that era? Um, and how spontaneous Spontaneous is it versus being a structured thing that you approach each night? It's um, it's probably like all things you know that, that you do, you undertake. Uh, Rock and Soul Review was like the first level of that kind of thing, you know, where we kind of picked uh, <clears throat> the songs uh, and the artists, um, and not, and then it evolved from there to maybe a little more. Um, um, uh, you know, uh, I guess it's kind of like uh, like all ideas. You know, they, they get a little hair on them after a while. You know, you start to kind of. I think we we we've dug a little deeper material wise, and uh, you know, and so uh, given a little bit of time, I think the show's gotten better, uh, even from two years ago. You know, uh, but we always try to do the main aim is to do a different show each time, not to do anything that we did last time. You know. So this show, uh, in, in its own way, is uh, kind of different, uh, but in this, it's same in the sense that we do some pretty, uh, everything from some pretty obscure numbers to uh, some numbers that everybody knows but probably would never think of that we would do. Like, you know, one of the songs we do is uh, Who's That Lady by the Isley Brothers. Oh, I love that. Yeah, and, and you know, when we first came up with it, I you know, I have to admit, I was kind of going, well, I, I love that record, but... You know, is that really something we should be doing? I don't know. You know, <laughs> uh, and it turns out to be, you know, the, you know, one of the so- songs the audience really gets off on. You know, and uh, how can you not tackle that? So- how can you not tackle that song, Mike? I mean, come on. Oh no, well, it's fun, and, and, and in the sense is, uh, we we all three sing that one, so it's it's kind of fun in that respect. It's kind of a a real group effort, you know, um, and. Uh, I remember Santana did a really nice version of that in the uh, like 1990 or something on Spirits Dancing in the Flesh, I think it was. Mm-mm. Oh, really? Yeah, I like that tune. So, I'd be uh, that's going to be a nice little treat. Uh, continue. What else were you saying? Well, no, no, it's it, it, it's it's almost like the uh, it, it's kind of like the rock and soul review has gotten a little more intense, if you know what I mean, in terms of our our in, you know our kind of intention to bring something special to the audience you know it's like it's given us a little time to kind of really uh come up with all those songs that we wish we had done the first time around that you know we didn't get a chance to do or you know that kind of thing so it's it's kind of evolved a little bit uh and i think for the better you know uh, um one thing's for sure is once we take the stage the audience doesn't have to deal with anybody coming and going you know we we just kind of stay up there and we all kind of melt into the band and and then step forward on our prospective songs and um uh we let donald do all the talking so you know we just kind of keep the thing rolling musically if you, if you know what i mean and so um and try to you know we figure that that's uh the best thing we can do for the audience is like give them as much music as we possibly can you know? of course of course so i'm not thinking that uh you're going to roll the dalai lama out as a special guest although who knows you got some pretty ma- major connections any <laughs> Any, any of your other local brothers, though, you thinking are going to pop in? or? Well, I know there's going to be a bunch of people there. You know, uh, I'm hoping that uh, to see all our friends there. You know, uh, you know, I don't know uh, necessarily. Typically, the show is such that we just kind of you know barrel through it. You know, uh, at night after night because there's uh, we, we try to kind of keep it even too. You know, whereas you know, Boss gets a certain amount of numbers and Donald gets a certain amount of numbers and, and I get a certain amount of numbers. Um, and, uh, so, uh, you know, it, it, anything can happen. I, I just haven't heard word of anything like that, you know, uh, but uh, we're hoping to kind of connect with everybody before and after show, you know, just to, uh, say hi and, and, uh, you know, uh, 
see all the people that you know we don't normally get a chance to see much these days what a crazy hoedown the maui thing could be if all of your buddies came out at once i don't even know if you guys could fit all that equipment in the in the mac you might have to. yeah no I'm, I'm 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 just about ready to wear nose glasses and uh <laughs> <laughs> well, I drive around town. <laughs> yeah, you know, oh, you know, but I think a lot of our friends will be there. It, it's uh, it's fun. You know, you know, you know how it is here in uh, the islands. It, it's small environment, so you know you, you run into everybody all the time. And, small kind, bro. Yeah, exactly, and uh, <laughs> uh, and, and that's great. Except if you're playing in town. <laughs> <laughs> no question uh your son dylan uh does he uh he's on our radar of course and and uh plan on in in making a little invitation for him in a moment but does he come check out your shows and are there any of these musical peers who we've been discussing or other associates who he's learned from or, or gotten any kind of mentoring from i guess is what i'm thinking yeah well over the years yeah most uh, he certainly has you know uh I mean, he was, he was kind of a lucky kid in a way, you know, because uh, through the years when people would come through town, when, when we were living in Nashville especially, uh, and he was just starting to play guitar, you know, uh, I, used to, I used to kind of, you know, laugh to myself. I'd be sitting there in the living room watching, you know, Robin Ford show him something on guitar, you know, <laughs> or David Pack, you know. And, uh, nice. And, and I'd be going, you know, he's... The kid's luckier than he realizes, you know. Sure. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, and and it, he's really kind of grown up on, uh, he really leans more towards music of the 70s and 60s, you know, uh, than uh, than anything else. You know, he, he has his favorite artists today, but uh, he really, um, I know he really, you know, uh, was heavily influenced by Neil Young, Bob Dylan, uh, oh, you know, people like that, uh, Graham Parsons, you know, uh, in a lot of ways, but David Bowie also, and ELO, you know. So his music has a strange mix of of all those different elements, you know. Um, you know what's funny, Mike, as you're talking, I'm thinking like of the three, uh, there's more, but three retro-y kind of kids like your your boy. There's like Lucas Nelson, uh, similar, like the way you're talking, we could be talking about him. Uh, yeah, yeah. P- Pat Simmons Jr., same deal. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird, isn't it? You guys all have these like the hip- hippified kids. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I know. They're, they're, they're bigger hippies than we were, you know. <laughs> Especially little Pat, you know. I mean, he's like... Uh, He's Mr. You know, Mr. Green Organic. I mean, it's it's amazing. He's he's into his whole lifestyle is is really um, very much uh, based on uh, you know diet and everything. And lifestyle is you know based on like uh, uh, sustainable farming, all that stuff. He's really interested in a lot of a lot of stuff. And uh, you know, his music is largely acoustic. I think you know, and uh, and, and my son same way. You know, my son uh, uh, he'll. You know, he, he lives. You know, him and his acoustic guitar. That's where his music comes from, and, and you know, the band uh, arranges it from there. So it has that kind of a retro feeling uh, uh, approach to it. You know, uh, even as even with the band. You know, uh, and he's got a great band, and, and I think all the kids have that. That uh, oh, they do. They're all individuals. I'm just saying I want to put it out there myself so I get a little bit of the credit way down the road. I see those three cats. I could see them on the stage together doing a little thing. It'd be like, it'd work. Yeah, it'd be fun. yeah. You know? I would love to see that. Of course you would. I know you would, my brother. <laughs> How could you not? Now, is Dylan coming along for these things, or what's the story? Uh, no, he won't be here. He's uh, actually... He's finishing up his second record in Nashville right now, but he and I have been doing a project together, and That's right. uh, and we're we're just finishing that up and uh, trying to figure out what to do with it, you know. But but it's been a fun thing to to do. We we've, we've gone in and uh, as I've mentioned to you before, you know, we just kind of pick songs for each other that. It's kind of like a truth or dare kind of a project where <laughs> he's picking songs for me that he thinks I won't do, and then. Uh, you know, we've just been kind of stretching ourselves out, doing stuff. I picked some stuff for him, like a Beach Boys song and things that, you know, uh, although he does kind of like the Beach Boys, but I don't think he'd ever try to do a Beach Boys song. So we're we're still kind of finishing that up. We just did an ELO song, believe it or not. And, did he so suggest the Marley? Uh, yeah, well, the, you know, he suggested the ELO song, and then and, uh, uh, I... Uh, he suggested something else for me. Oh, a Radiohead song that we did. There's no Marley? I thought there was a Bob Marley I read that you guys... Oh, yeah, there is a Bob Marley song. Uh, That was... uh, 
kind of one that we both liked. You know, that, that was that was more common ground, I think. Which one? Uh, every little thing's gonna be all right. Oh, dude! So every little bird. Yeah, 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 that's a great jam. Mm-mm. Yeah, and we 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 kind of did a, a an old Ace song too that uh, um, I believe he suggested, but it's uh, the old song "How Long," uh, and we did it more of a reggae kind of a ska style, you know. Uh, and uh, so it, it's been kind of a fun project. It's just been a chance for us to be in the studio without killing each other, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got to get him into the Atherton here one of these days, dude. I really would love to get him uh, into our studio and do a little acoustic thing for HPR. It'd be fun if he's... Oh, yeah. You know, when, when we finish this thing up, man, I, I, I would love to come in. He and I'll come in with, uh, you know, uh, either just the two of us or whatever and, and play some of the stuff for you, you know. It'd be so cool, man, to have and you we come would in. Love to do that. Yeah, at the studio on our piano, it would just sound so good. Uh, yeah. um, you, say again? No, he, I know he would love that. You know. Hey, and we would love it too, being member supported and all that, as you know. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's certainly an enhancement for the folks to see a cat like yourself and your, your wonderfully talented uh, offspring stopping in. You mentioned Robin Ford. I also know there's a record with, with uh, Robin, right? Yeah, well, we, we have about five things mixed and uh i'm gonna you know uh go home and master those things it, it's been difficult for me and robin because we you know we we're both traveling in different directions robin's actually done a couple of records uh one with uh, a band he works with um with uh michael landau and uh, a group of players uh and uh it's a great great kind of a rock jazz group um and I'm having a senior moment here. I can't think of the name of the band, <laughs> but uh, they, they've just finished the record. And uh, and then Robin just did a, a kind of a, a acoustic, almost blues record uh, uh, that he's done with Ed Cherney uh, as producer. And uh, uh, from what I understand, has turned out great. And I think that should be kind of coming up. Robin does records a lot faster than I do, obviously. So. <laughs> um, but uh, so he and I uh, hopefully we'll. we'll uh, We'll put out about five things like an EP, you know, coming up here and just to see what happens. And um, again, just trying, you know, we're out here like everybody else trying to find a home for these projects, you know, um, we, we, as we, we're all kind of independent agents these days, you know. And so you finish something and uh, you hope that somebody, you know, wants to help you market it, you know. And uh, so I'm going to probably just put the stuff up on the internet so people can get to it and uh, and then see if we can't drum up some interest from uh, maybe a, a indie label or something. You know? That's why you got to do everything in a grassroots sort of way, take advantage of opportunities. So, sounds like you you obviously know that sort of thing. When you're when you're here at the uh, Blaisdell, any chance I could record just a brief follow-up interview? Is that all right? Like a little Oh, t- absolutely. Anytime, Dave. Definitely will make it happen. All right. No, I appreciate that. And I thought of you. We had Kenny Loggins come through. I don't know if you hooked up with him or if you were on the road or whatever, but he was in the islands, and we did a, a thing, a couple things, uh, and we had him down, and we were talking, and he was telling the story of first coming over to your house to work on and uh, I guess he was hearing the initial riff of what a fool believes. He's walking up to the house, hearing you in there. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember that well. <laughs> you remember that same moment, huh? Oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> him knocking on the door going, I think I got something for that. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, that was the first song we wrote together, actually, it's What a Fool Believes. <laughs> That's cool. Well, uh, yeah, he said that. I'm sure he said to say hi. He was definitely, we were riffing on you having a good time. Yeah, I think I'm going to see him actually coming up here. We're both going to be in the same vicinity for like, uh, you know, a few hours. He's playing the night after I play with the Doobie Brothers uh, up in Sonoma. I'm actually doing a gig with those guys. Um, and, uh, what a busy bugger you are, huh? How many, you know, uh, how yeah, many of those do you stuff in there when you're not doing the Dukes? Well, you know, it's funny. I, I think I was saying that somebody else said, I, at my age now, I'm probably busier than I was in my 20s, you know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not ungrateful. I know you are. You're very grateful. That's why everybody loves you so much. You're the king. Hey, I hope you had fun today. Was this okay to keep you somewhat entertained? Oh, absolutely, man. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you, Dave. I look forward to seeing you, too. I give you a big hug, and, and uh, travel safe, Brother Mike. Thank you. All right, buddy. Aloha. Bye-bye.